So back in Windows, I'm gonna to go to Configuration on ASDM and select Startup Wizard. In this example, I'm gonna modify the existing configuration and click Next. I'm gonna leave the host name at the default and click Next. Now, my outside interface is not configured. I'm gonna enable the outside interface and give it the name outside and get it to use DHCP. The ASA will get its IP address from the NAT cloud. Click Next. So my inside interface has a security level of 100. IP address is 10.1.1.254. Outside interface will use DHCP. Click Next. I'm gonna add a static default route. So the default route or any IP4 will go to gateway 192.168.122.1. That is the IP address of the NAT cloud. I'm gonna click OK. Click Next. At the moment, I'm not gonna enable DHCP on the inside interface. I'm gonna click Next. I wanna enable PAT or port address translation on the outside interface so that my inside host can get to the internet. Click Next. I'm gonna enable HTTP server for HTTPS, ASDM access. We enabled that previously. I'm simply gonna keep that as it is and click Next. I'm not gonna enable order updating of the ASA. Click Next. I'm not gonna enable smart call home. Click Next. Now this is my configuration that will be applied to the ASA. I'm gonna click Finish. Again, I'm warned about the license, that's fine. Click OK. ASA is now configured with that configuration. So as an example, if I type show run on the ASA, notice the outside interface has been configured to use DHCP. Show IP shows us that the ASA has received an IP address through DHCP. So do that again, show IP. There's the IP address. Show IP route or show route shows us that a default route has been configured. So I should be able to ping 192.168.122.1. And in my example, I'm gonna ping a physical router in my network that's behind the NAT cloud. Now at the moment that doesn't work, what I'm gonna do is save the configuration through ASDM and then go to routing, static routes, click edit and notice the mistake I made. I didn't select outside, selected inside by mistake. So this is actually going to the wrong destination. That needs to be outside, click okay, click apply. So show route, that looks better. And notice I can ping devices in my internal network. Now note, these are IP addresses in my network. You may not have those, so you may not be able to ping them. Depends on your network. If I try and ping google.com, I get invalid hostname. So in ASDM, I'm gonna to go to device management, DNS, DNS client, and I wanna add a DNS server to my ASA. Now I can do it through this interface, but I've had problems with that interface sometimes. You might have to restart ASDM, but I'll show you something else in the meantime. So let me show you what happens when you make changes to the configuration directly through the CLI. So I'll specify a name server. I'll specify a name server of Google. So notice now in ASDM, I'm told that the configuration is out of sync. So at the moment, there is no DNS configuration. But if I click refresh, I'm told firstly about license. I'm not going to show that message again. Click OK. And notice now I can see the DNS server configuration 
being configured on the outside interface. So back on the ASA, ping google.com, notice that works, ping cisco.com, that also works. Now back in Windows, ping google.com doesn't work, ping 192.168.1.22.1 doesn't work, that's the NAT cloud. I'll try and ping a device in my own network, that also doesn't work. What I need to do is change my adapter settings. I need to remove this address and edit my PC to use the ASA as the default gateway. So now my PC only has one IP address, 10111. I should be able to ping the ASA as before, but now I should be able to ping the NAT cloud. It's still not working because in the ASA, I have to permit ICMP traffic. So we have to permit ICMP traffic because ICMP traffic is going to be dropped by default. So I'm going to go to Firewall. I'm going to select Service Policy Rules. I'm going to edit the default policy and go to Rule Actions. And I'm going to permit ICMP and click OK and click Apply. So now let's try and ping google.com. Notice that works. Ping cisco.com, that works. Ping another website such as configuredterminal.com, that also works. So what I'll do now is save my configuration. And if we have a look at the config of the ASA, notice we see configuration on the inside interface, outside interface. Scrolling down, we can see DNS information, name server, lots of other configuration, including a class map that's got a default inspection rule. The policy map is inspecting various traffic types, including ICMP, which we added to the config. So at this point, my device should be able to connect to the internet. So I should be able to go to cisco.com as an example and go to gns3.com. Now it may be slow because of the throttling on the ASA. So I'll go to a website such as Google to see if it's any quicker, but notice it's still very, very slow. We may just have to wait a while for the pages to refresh, but once again, we can ping cisco.com, we can ping google.com from the Windows PC. Now, at this point, it has connected to GNS3, it has connected to Cisco, and it has connected to Google. It's just really slow. If we look at the translations on the ASA, you can see that there are a lot of translations from the Windows PC to devices on the internet. So a lot's taking place and we simply need to wait for the pages to load. And there you go, there's Google, which is now loaded. So I've been able to get to the Google website and I could do a search in Google and we can see the results of that Google search. So there we go. GNS3 is still loading and so is cisco.com, but I've proven at this point that you can get an ASA integrated in GNS3 connected to the internet and you can get ASDM working and managing the Cisco ASA. So back in ASDM, click on home. We can see memory usage, we can see CPU usage, core usage and other details. 
we can see that both the inside interface and outside interface are up. We can see connections per second and traffic on interfaces. Use this more for studying rather than testing throughput. Now a few last things, go to file, show running configuration. There's the running configuration of the ASA as displayed in Windows. I can, as an example, save the running config. I could also save it elsewhere if I, for instance, have a TFTP server available. But notice there are various wizards that I could use here if I wanted to. But at this point, I think that's enough for this introductory video. I've shown you how to integrate Cisco ASA and ASDM in a Genus 3 environment. I can't breathe cause you pushed me back. I should have stayed, stayed away from you. It feels like I'm, I'm being attacked. I don't know what, what I'm gonna do. You're trying to improve me. Why you do that to me? I don't wanna be with you. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like it. And please subscribe to my YouTube channel. I want to wish you all the very best.